it's the first evening of our December trip and uh, we're down at Ictus Lake right down in the south of France near the Pyrenees southwest corner of France and uh, the sun's just gone actually it's been a lovely afternoon um, but yes yeah, it's, it's quite pleasant it's going to be quite cold soon the nights have been quite cold but days been okay so far not particularly good fishing weather I would say that I mean it's lovely for us you know calm flat surface nice sunshine so it's good for getting the rods out I've got all the rods set up ready to go so I'll do them in a minute but um, we did it a different way this time um, because it was right down the southwest corner of France what we did was got the ferry from Portsmouth down to Bilbao top of Spain um, and that meant only about a two and a half hour drive up from Bilbao to the lake here uh, so that saved a lot of driving uh, instead of I suppose what would normally be well getting on for a thousand miles I suppose each way uh, it was about 200 including the, the trip from England down to the ferry so um, that was that was a much more relaxing way to do it the only trouble with the ferry going to Bill Bowie is, is the timings are a little bit out we had to arrive uh, here um, Thursday afternoon just trying to think when it was but yeah it was Thursday afternoon so what we've done they've got some brilliant chalets he's got 20 chalets on site little wooden ones and they're absolutely lovely so we had two nights we had a night on the ferry and then we've had two nights in the wooden chalet which was which was really nice it was a nice break so instead of uh, breaking my neck and doing a thousand mile drive down and uh, having to do all this we've had, we had a bit of a, a chill out and uh, yeah relaxing time really it's been nice but here we are, we're on the lake anyway, so business starts now. And uh, yeah, like I say, the rods are ready to go, so I'm, I'm going to get them out now. It's only about a, an hour, hour and a half of, of light left, so I'll do my best to find a few spots. I'm actually in the VIP swim. Um, not fished this swim before. i uh, fished a few of the others, but not this one. But what this one has got, is it's got loads of water. Loads of I didn't realise how much water this swim uh, controls. Uh, the only thing I would say about that, a lot of it is quite deep water with, you know, sort of featureless. There, There is features out there, um, so that's what I'm going to look for. Um, but yeah, it looks good actually, I'm pleased to be in here. It looks really nice. There's a few nice facilities which I'll show you as the, as the session goes on, no doubt. Um, but at the moment I just I need to get fishing, basically, so that's what I'm going to do now, get the rods out. It's just the start. <laughs> a nice session ahead of us, so hopefully it's going to be a good one, we'll see. Well, it is a nice evening. There's a few people on actually, considering it's, um, what have we got, December the 17th today. Uh, there's a couple of guys out there, there's a couple in swim 6, a couple in swim 9 and 10, uh, a couple over in 5 as well, putting their rods out, so, but no problem, we've got loads of room here. So anyway, I've been told, um, this tree here, I presume this comes up on a, a bar, I've been sort of told that 20 metres past that is a good area. I mean, I don't know this area at all, so... Yeah, I mean it doesn't come up really shallow, it's only it's 19 foot, I thought it might have come up a little bit more than that. Oh it does there, saying that, a little into 18. Using quite a heavy lead just to hold on these bars. Um, you know, I mean, if you, if you watched any of the videos you will have seen this rig many times now. It is just the basic stuff with the fang twister sort of knotless knotted with a KD style little um, key cray snowman um, these are a bit different just trying these out with the Nash BP12s they're the the bigger version of the the BP range uh, look quite nice so far anyway this seems to be fairly uniform around here so I will drop that down there there we go. See what it feels like. Yeah, that's harder there. A little harder. Yeah, that's harder not plugging in there. 
Hmm. I've got to settle for that. That'll do actually. For now, until I find out what I'm doing better. I mean, start of the session, you know, people say to me, you know, what do you look for at the start of the session? Well, I'll try different things. I, you know, I don't really know half the time what I'm looking for. But um, I'll just look for something that takes me fancy or, or feels good. Not going to go too mad with the bait. I'm going to put a little bit out. Uh, these are all key cray. It's a key cray snowman, this one. And yeah, I suppose about 60, 70 baits just around the area. Not going to bait them too tightly. I'm just hoping that fish are going to come into this area and have a little mooch about. There we go. It's as simple as that at the moment. Like I say, I'm not 100% sure of what I'm doing. It's just a bit of trial and error, as is often the case at the start of the session, and then try and work things out. Something normally seems to work itself out, uh, and they won't necessarily, if I do catch fish, um, come from these spots. But, you know, that's fishing. Sturgeon or something. It's fighting too hard for a carp. I was hoping for at all on the first bite of an early morning, first day, but uh, brilliant take and one thing for sure, they do fight very hard and uh, I guess halfway through the fight that um, it wasn't a carp, <laughs> but I uh, thought it was a bit late in the year for catfish, uh, I guess it might be one of these, I mean they, they do go absolutely huge in here up to about well, 80 kilos is, is the record here, which I, I think is a French record. This one was only just over 30 pound, believe it or not. Give me a hell of a scrap anyway. There we go, first morning on the lake and we got a bite. Not quite what I was after, but um, some action anyway. <sighs> Hopefully the next one will be a carp.
Well, we've got one. It's a little bit noisy as the gravel workings are in full swing on the lead up to Christmas, I suppose. Um, like I say, we've got one. It's the third morning, so three nights in. First morning we had that sturgeon. Uh, not much happening in between, but a little change in the weather. It's quite cold, a um, bit drizzly, but, well, just now. Finally went off anyway, and uh, not big and 25 pound mirror. Nice, pretty fish though. And uh, to be honest, just pleased to get one. Really pleased to get off the mark. It's, uh, it's certainly not easy fishing. The weather hasn't hasn't been great. It's very still, and uh, odd fish have been coming out though. So. Like I say, I'm pleased to get off the mark anyway, and a pretty fish as well, 25 pound. Uh, on the key cray, it was on the same spot as the sturgeon actually. And in about 19 foot, there was a, a firmish spot that I found out there, just raises up slightly off the bottom. And uh, yeah, just touching 19 foot, and uh, not a load of bait around it because they're not feeding heavily, but. Um, well, we're off the mark, that's the main thing, so uh, I don't think we're going to catch loads, but if I can just get a few, I'd be happy with that. You know, it's December, it's a cold session, even though it's the south of France, it's, it's certainly not warm here. I think a high of about 7 degrees today, cold and miserable, um, but this one's cheered the day up anyway. <laughs> so, happy days, we've got one. We're off the mark. Well, this might be interesting at some stage. This is a little pool just over the back of the lake on the outflow. If you look round there, there's the main lake and this is the outflow. And a couple of years ago they had a flood and the fish got out over this outflow and they've since built this barrier to stop any more fish getting out. But some did get out anyway. And uh, this little pool is blocked off more or less from the river. Um, but I spoke to the guy the other day and he said, oh no, there's still two or three down in this little pool and it's only about a foot deep. Sure enough, I've looked today and uh, I've seen three in there. I can actually see them now. You won't be able to see them from here. Um, but there's a little mirror, a little common and a, a bigger common. Not massive, but... Um, well, I put a little bit of sweet corn down there earlier and actually watched them feeding on it. So I'm just going down now, put a bit more sweet corn in give them a few little citrus boilies and uh, who knows, might have a little dabble. I'm sure um, they feel like prisoners in this little pond so it'd be nice for them to go back in the main lake but um, I'm sure it's going to be trickier than what it appears to be but we shall see. Well they're all there again. All the bait I put out yesterday evening was all gone this morning so I've put another half a tin of corn and some uh, oh, just yeah just spooked off a little bit there some citrus boilies and a few key crays and uh, literally well the whole lot's gone there's not a scrap left down there another mirror I've noticed there's there's definitely four fish here there are three together but there's another mirror I spotted this morning and he's just over the other side there yeah I might have to come and stick a rod out here soon <laughs> look at him down there hoovering up it's all gone mate your mates have eaten it all I'll have to come back in a minute and put a bit more bait there. But he's uh, he's looking for more. That's where it all was. Well, 
just going to have a, a quick couple of minutes. The fish are literally just the other side of that grass there. Just going to uh, put two or three grains of corn on a size 8 uni. I mean, all the bait that I put out earlier is all gone. I've just thrown a couple more handfuls out. They've just moved out at the moment, so maybe it's the chance to get me bait in place. Maybe I'll sneak in and get the rig in place. You can see him. Got them, one of the mirrors taking a couple of grains. He's actually closer in than where my bait is. That's two grains gone. <laughs> Hoovering it up is. Mm, yeah, very nice, mate. Well, I'll tell you what, it's December the 21st, and I bet there's not many people out stalking carp today, but I've actually stalked one on sweet corn in the edge, how about that? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's been the coldest day of the trip, but so far it's been the most eventful as well. We've just had dinner, settling down for the evening, and, uh, well, just about to put a film on, actually. <laughs> and uh, one's rattled off, and it's, it's one that I actually moved earlier on today. Um, I've had one out in the middle, on top of a plateau, and I had it in about 13, 14 foot. Nothing had happened anyway, so I moved it right down into deeper water into about 20 21 foot and it was nice and hard down there I thought well, I'll try it and well it's only been there about five five hours something like that and it's gone off with this one on the end uh, just under 38 pound about 37 12 so a cracking surprise and uh, it just shows you uh, getting the depth is always so crucial especially on waters that have got a bit more depth to them like this one I mean it's 
it's, uh, it's got quite an average depth of about 25 to 35 foot uh, with lots of shallower bars and sometimes they're up on the bars and sometimes they're down in deeper water and uh, at the moment it seems like they're in the deeper water. Um, like I say this one come from about 21 foot but um, yeah happy days things are starting to happen now um, and hopefully it's going to carry on like that but um, yeah there we go two fish today so we're happy with that get this fella back and uh, carry on with film night I think <laughs> And now it's gone off twice in uh, in 12 hours, basically. I had a 37.12 yesterday evening, and then this morning this one, 32 pounds. Lovely hard fighting fish, but um, it just shows how little things make a difference, really. It had been sitting up on that plateau doing nothing and I'm thinking there's not many fish about where they were about but they just didn't want to be up on the, the shallow water. Put it down a bit deeper and hey presto off it goes so you know well it shows that it pays to try different things for a start and uh, it shows that you know the swim isn't always dead you know you think the rod is just sitting out there waiting for fish to come along whereas if you do something different you can make things happen so you know I changed things up a little bit and all of a sudden the dead rod has produced two fish in 12 hours two nice 30s so uh, there you go so the moral of the story is uh, you don't always have to sit and wait you can make things happen sometimes I was lucky enough yesterday to be able to go around and see uh, the latest stocking of fish going in, in the lake. Um, Jeremy, the owner, he, he's been very proactive in stocking the lake over the years. And uh, I was here, when we was here three years ago at Christmas, um, he, he was sort of in the middle of a, a real big sort of stocking program at the time. And uh, at that time, a lot of the fish actually went in this swim. We was fishing over in swim six, so I came around and saw those fish. And uh, yeah, luckily he had another uh, stocking plan for this week. Um, this time the fish were going in down the other end in swim three. So uh, I went down and, and saw those fish going in. There, there was, a, well, he, he had about a ton of fish all, all together, something like that, to be split mainly between the two lakes, the front lake and this lake. I suppose there was something like about 100 fish when in this lake and uh, quality fish actually, really good fish. You can see there those lovely sort of high backed sort of roundy shaped fish. Um, the water quality is really nice here um, but of course you know as much as the bait goes in here and you know, that obviously helps, bait definitely helps fish grow as it's proved on many lakes, Rainbow Lake for instance, you know the fish rocketed on there when more bait started going in uh, and I, I suppose over the years gradually uh, more and more quality baits started to go in here uh, and that certainly helped but the, you know there's to go along with that it, it needs a fair amount of natural food as well and um, on, on the face of it you know that it's hard to see what that natural food is, certainly blood worm and that um, there's not much in the way of crayfish or mussels but what there is there's a lot of these it, there's a type of shellfish in here and, uh, the only other place I've seen these is down at Cassian actually so um, you know that bodes well for the lake um, because we know how well Cassian's done over the years and there we, we were talking about a fish the other day um, and Jeremy put one in here 
Well, he, he had his doubts whether he wanted to put it in because it was a, a 16 kilo common, and he, he said like he, you know he wasn't too sure on the look of it and really whether he wanted it in the lake, but he put it in anyway. And uh, sure enough, that fish came out about three days ago at 27 kilos. A German guy had it in swim 10 at 27 kilos. So in two years, it's gone from 16 kilos up to 27 kilos. Um, so that shows you know what the fish can. Uh, you know, sort of grow on how well they can grow on in here, and, and they do. You know, they, there's countless other examples of fish that have grown on really well in here. Um. Well, it's been a couple of days without a carp now. Um, not sure what the time is actually, it must be just coming up to Christmas Eve now so um, but apart from the massive great sturgeon I had the other night 92 pound this was on the same rod actually uh, it's been quiet carp wise but I did go up and see the stocking of fish earlier on uh, and I thought that maybe it might push the uh, the fish up this way so you never know it might have done that so I've just had this one uh, which was 27 12 so not a big one, but um, certainly a welcome bit of action. And uh, yeah, maybe it has done that, you know, because I know when they put the fish in this end, you know, last time I see a stock in three years ago, all the fish went in in this swim, actually. Uh, and what it did was push all the others right up the other end of the lake. So this time around, the stocking was at the far end. Uh, and the hope was that it was going to push the fish up this end. Well. This one was certainly up here anyway, so you never know, it might have done the trick, but um, well we've got one anyway, so pleased to see a fish. <laughs> not, not quite with it at the moment, just sort of woke up and uh, screaming run, and that's straight out in the boat to play a fish. But um, uh, we've got one anyway, so great stuff, back amongst the fish. Well, it's Christmas Day and I haven't managed to catch one from the main lake yet. Did manage to lose one, got round the tree and I lost it, so I'm very disappointed about that. But in my attempt to catch a Christmas Day carp, I'm now back on the little back sluice pond and I've been feeding these fish every day and uh, they've been mopping it up every day. A few key cray boilies and a bit of sweet corn. And uh, well, I fed them a bit early this morning and they've eaten all that. There, there's four, basically, there was four carp here. Um, I'm going to get it out now because I can see the big common coming. That's where I need to be. Up there. Right. And all I'll do now is just crouch here and uh, I mean they'll, they'll all come in because they keep coming in and eating it all the time so I've just got to be quiet and still and, and hope that he comes in and grabs that before the two little ones. There's, there's two little small ones, there's a small mirror and a small common and to be honest the, the small ones would probably be all right in here but the bigger one deserves to be in the main lake really, he's too big for the for this little pond, shallow pond so uh, well I can see them just over there behind them branches and sort of heading this way, they will come in and have a look where the uh, bait has been for sure because they keep coming back here and they keep looking for the bait so I'll, I'll be quiet for a minute
Oh, well, I got him. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it, but I finally got him. Christmas Day carp. Oh, stalking in the edge. Oh, look at that. He's a beauty as well. The little common in there. He tried to pick up my bait about six times. I had to pull it out of his mouth. And the big one looked spooky. But he kept swimming around and around and around. And eventually he come back and started having a few grains. And every time I went to switch the camera on, it sort of spooked him a bit. So I couldn't get it on film. Sure enough, he came back and I got him. Ah, oh, Christmas day carp stalked on a free line sweet corn in the margins. Brilliant stuff. And uh, from this little pole. But he can go join his mates in the big lake now. Oh, happy days. Oh, I'm really pleased with that one. Oh. <sighs> well, Christmas Day. And uh, did get a Christmas Day carp after all. Not quite how I was expecting. Um, I did lose one in the night out on the marks, which was very disappointing. But um, in the back pool, I've been feeding carp all week. And in particular, there was one decent common that I put about 25 pound that I was hoping to get so I thought well today's the day to have a go for him sure enough I went and caught him free line sweet corn <coughs> in the edge <coughs> and uh, well it was it was all fireworks when it went off obviously couldn't get it on film because every time I switched the camera on it spooked him for some reason so I left the camera off he came back in and uh, I see him pick up the grains of sweet corn that were just in the edge and uh, a little bit bigger than what I thought. It was actually 27 and a half. But there we go. Christmas Day carp. <laughs> That's all I wanted. I'd sort of um, add this as a backup plan. If I didn't catch one, I thought, well, I'm going to go and have a, a little bit of stalking on Christmas Day. don't think I've ever been stalking on Christmas Day before, let alone actually caught one. But there we go. December stalking with sweet corn and went and got one and the biggest one in the pool as well <laughs> so there we go I think he's going to be happier in the big lake somehow so uh, well he may not uh, be too happy at the moment but he will be in a little while but there we go happy days for me anyway a Christmas day carp Well, finally broke through the 40 pound barrier anyway. Got a 41 and a quarter. Whew. And, uh, well, actually, it was the first take on this rod since we've been here. I've been messing about with a, a spot out there in 22 foot. It was a lovely hard spot. Looked and felt really good. Uh, but as until now, I just couldn't get a bite off it. But um, I did something a little bit different yesterday evening. I put a couple of a couple of the old tangerine dreams on and uh, I've not used them for ages they, they're the uh, instant action range came out with the, the coconut creams and I thought I'd just try one of those in the deep waters it's quite deep out there 22 foot I thought I'd try a couple of those on just for something different really um, a lot more flavour a lot more attraction uh, and like they say instant action so uh, that was the plan anyway, and uh, lo and behold, it worked. First bite on that rod, and uh, best one so far, 41 and a quarter. So, uh, probably try them on another rod as well today, just to see if it was a, a fluke, you know, a one off, or uh, if I have found something. But, um, well, we got this one anyway, which 
was worth uh, messing about with a, a few different things, you know, trying a few different things. Um, you know, it paid off with this one, so happy days. Well, I'm coming out to the central part of the lake here, and that yellow boy in the middle marks, well, basically the centre of the lake um, from all points. So all of the swims around here, so you've got five, six, seven, me and eight, uh, nine and ten can all basically fish up to that boy. You know, all go, all everyone's water sort of goes to a point at that boy. So I'm sure they'll all be watching me now, see if I'm taking liberties or not. <laughs> Dunk. Yeah, I mean it is. It's lovely and hard there. I'm not going to put loads around it. Just literally putting that there. Um, and the idea is higher track baits. Hopefully, get me a bite. Well, at last we've got a good one. It's been a tough session, this really. I mean, I've caught fish, you know, sort of steadily all the way through, so I'm not complaining too much. But um, the big fish were conspicuous by their absence. But the last few days, there's been a couple of better ones coming out, uh, but from the other swims. So I thought, I hope I haven't missed my chance. Uh, and sure enough, I hadn't. This morning, just now, had this absolute great big beauty, um, 52.12. So, <laughs> guys, amazing. They're so strong this time of year. Even after a good fight, out in the boat, they're still strong. But there we go. An absolute beautiful fish, eh? Cool. And we're actually, I mean, we're getting near the end of the session now. We've only got a couple of nights left. So, uh, I was beginning to think the chance were real good and, well, not quite gone, but it was getting that way. And so, you know, I'm so pleased to see this one. I mean, we've had some lovely fish anyway. This was from uh, the spot out in the middle. I had a couple of fish from it earlier in the trip and uh, then it went dead. But I changed one rod over to uh, Tangerine Dreams and caught a 40 the other day. So I changed this one to Tangerine Dream as well. Sure enough, it's what produced this one. So, uh, well, there we go. You just never know. You fancy a bit of, a bit of fruity stuff. <laughs> so there we go, what a cracking fish, eh? What an absolutely lovely fish. Well, it's a freezing cold morning, probably the coldest morning we've had actually. Um, but I've just had this one, and uh, literally when I netted it, the net was frozen to the boat. Uh, I had some H blocks in there, and they were all stuck to the net. So uh, I had to unpeel everything before I could get the net in the water and, and defrost it. But um, I haven't weighed it. It 
it's a an upper 20 I don't know maybe 30 but probably not probably upper 20 but a nice fish in its winter colors and uh, well more than welcome on a, a cold frosty morning actually the last day of the year it's the last day of 2016 December the 31st so uh, whatever happens <laughs> they're always the same aren't they guys if you hadn't thought hard enough out in the boat there we go last day of 2016 and finishing off with a carp so that's nice isn't it nice way Well, that's another trip over. We're all packed up now and uh, just come back to the chalet for a while, get things dried out. We've got the, the bivy covers and ground sheets that were all soaking wet with frost, um, but they're all drying out here under the canopy. It's nice to get in the warm and uh, have a shower. We've got um, about a day and a half before our ferry leaves. So it's actually nice just to come back here, get warmed up, have a nice meal, chill out a bit and uh, Get ourselves ready. It's only about two and a half hours back to Bilbao, so it's, it's not a great big journey we've got. Um, quite looking forward to the ferry drive home. But, um, but there were a couple of decent fish out. I went out around to the other side to Steph, who was in Swim 5, and photographed, uh, well, 27 kilos, so 60 pound mirror for him, cracking fish. And Volker in Swim 4, a German guy, a nice German guy, he had been uh, struggling a bit. He'd had a few sturgeon, but hadn't had a carp, and then Literally, on the last morning, I put my phone on and uh, he'd had a, a 25 kilo mirror, uh, 55 pounds, so fair play to him, you know, he stuck it out and uh, persevered and, and got his reward, a lovely fish. And uh, I'll tell you what, it, it, the lake is really doing well at the moment, Ictus Lake is a fantastic place and uh, it's one of those lakes that, that's just on its way up, you know, it, he's um, put in a lot of fish a few years ago, Jeremy, and uh, they're all really coming on in leaps and bounds now, putting on loads of weight and there's a lot of 25 kilo fish out there now so uh, it's one of those waters to keep an eye on and uh, well now's the time to get on it. Now in the next few years it's really sort of going places so I'm certainly going to be coming back here for sure. Um, besides the fish it's just a lovely place to be, it really is a nice place this. Uh, nice people, great fish and uh, great facilities. Um, but there we go. Um, Fishing's over for me, so just these last few bits here, get in the van and uh, like I say, have a little bit of a chill out and then we'll be on our way back home, but it's been a great trip, so uh, well, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you next time. <laughs>